Thomas Guerin, professor of sociology at Indiana University, is best known for his work on truth spots, those places that lend credibility to claims and legitimacy to belief. His work covers a wide swath of human experience from religion to science, from Delphi to the laboratory. The, the idea of a truth spot is that places lend credibility to claims. Lend is a weak word by intention. It doesn't determine anything, but it's available. Why don't you think about this question? Um, what kind of truth are we talking about such that this place is the best kind of place, materially, spatially, architecturally, in order to make that truth? I'm thinking, hmm, okay, what kind of truths do we have out there? Scientific, religious, legal, identity claims, historical truths. For each type of truth, what kind of place is perfect for making that kind of knowledge, that kind of truth? Put another way, how does a place lend credibility to different sorts of truths? Hmm. So my point is, what's a university? It's, it's the collection of brains, it's the instruments to do what you're going to do with them, it's the people to know what to do with them, and most importantly, to be able to say, I've got an idea, okay? Starts with that. It's not a claim yet, it's not truth yet, but I've got an idea. All the necessities are at a university to convert, I've got an idea into, that's a truthful statement about the way the world is. And that's, to me, what makes the university a truth spot. The technological capacity from the telephone on has made it possible to do a lot of stuff right. without being in the same place. Right. Being at the same time and synchronicity so that you are together, whether you are physically near each other or apart, but you are connected at that moment, seems to be crucial. I agree with that completely. But I want to counter with the argument that place still matters. Again, the dependent variable needs to be specified. For me, I'm interested in this process of, of making knowledge, determining credible, legitimate knowledge, sharing that knowledge, making it available and developing it. For that particular activity, which I think is fundamental to human existence, um, place co-location remains vital. Um, for, the, for the simple reason that we are still dependent on too much of the materiality that has to be agglomerated at spaces in order to develop ideas. And I mean everything from the instruments, to the specimens, to the libraries, to the seminar rooms, to the hallways with the marker boards. All of that is essential to making knowledge. It is not simply connecting two minds in the ether. Uh, it is the stuff around that matters. And it that stuff is resolutely material, it's physical, and it can be dispersed or it can be concentrated. And if you're in the making of knowledge game or legitimating claims game, you want to pull as much of that as you can together because that's how you ratify a claim. You do the experiment, you analyze the observations, you talk to people, you write it up and share it, you teach it. All of that's what's going on at a university. But a, a university is a saturated physical environment in which around the corner is inevitably going to be something that you will learn from. Chance favors the prepared mind. Chance favors the prepared places. And what is a prepared place? Just like a prepared mind. You do your study and then Wow, it just seemed like chance that you come up with the theory of evolution. Well, what's a prepared place? It's a university. It has the people, the, the wherewithal, the data, the machines, everything you need there for the chance discovery. But it's not chance, right? Because it's happening in that kind of a, I like the notion of a saturated place, saturated with the ingredients of truth-making. 